You'll never see a more beautiful view of Middle Tennessee than from, well, up there. No, not in a noisy helicopter or traditional airplane, but rather in a motorless glider. For more than three decades, members of the Eagleville Soaring Club have attracted a lot of aviators who enjoy a, well, natural high. What's more, as we discover, they often take along passengers. It's a clear Saturday morning at the Eagleville Soaring Club and a dozen or so members have showed up to get their weekly natural high. After a quick check of controls in the cockpit, they take turns taxing down the runway for takeoff. A rope is attached to the underside of the glider and a tow plane carries them thousands of feet into the air. Then they're loose and on their own. It's an airborne adventure all powered by Mother Nature. We use the sun's energy that uh, hits the earth and then it expands the air. And so we fly into those thermals and use that thermal power. If you've ever noticed a, a buzzard that's up maybe midday or after, that's what they're doing. We're just doing the same thing that they're doing. That's Werner Ruger coming in for a landing. He's one of the club's most avid gliders. I learned to fly in Switzerland and came over here and found Eagle Wheel and, and if you land out they come and pick you up and it's just like a real good family. Have you ever landed in someone else's field? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm well known for that. <laughs> the origins of gliding go back to the early 1800s and an inventor named George Cayley. Gliding or soaring as a sport goes back to the 1920s. Gary Davis is a veteran glider pilot and instructor who gave me a tour of the club's ASK-21 German-built two-seater. Vertical speed indicator or variometer in the case of a glider is called a, uh, a variometer, air speed indicator, and uh, altimeter. Oh, I see. Pop it out, pull it all the way out, look out there on the wing there, oh, yeah. and there it is. See it? Just like two big billboards up there that really kill the heck out of the, uh, the lift. I would say it's simple, but it's... Probably not. Well, we say let's go down there and try it out. I'm still locked. Are you locked up front? Yes, sir. Checklist is complete. We're probably getting ready to get hooked up. The tow plane's back. Our checklist is complete. If you get really hot in there, you can open this up right this here. This is the air conditioner. That's, That's air it. Conditioner. All right. I think we're going to roll here in a second. And you're in the air. All we've got to do now is just keep the tow rope level. It's already getting a little bit bumpy, so that's an indicator it's going to be a good glider day. The tow plane takes us up to about 3,000 feet, then it's time to let go. Here we go. Okay, there we go. You did good. Check out Ron there. Goodbye, Ron. Finding the thermals takes a combination of skill and luck. Apparently, Gary and I had both. The great open views and the rush were exactly what I expected. What I didn't expect was taking over the controls myself. Experienced pilots like Gary can make a fast low pass at about 200 feet, hit another thermal and quickly gain altitude. Time flies literally when you're having fun like this. After a half hour, Gary makes a few quick turns and safely puts us back down on the ground. Pop your canopy, wow. Joe, and you're good to go. What a ride. What a ride. Ah. What'd you think about that, Joe? It's nothing like anything else. Flying. Don't need a motor. <laughs> That's great, man. Thanks. All right. I'm glad you had a good time. That was awesome. The Eagleville Soaring Club supports itself by selling rides to the public. And that ride can often lead to a gliding addiction. That's usually the way it goes. You give them one ride, and then the next thing you know, they're wanting to uh, route the wings and get their private pilot license. And then they can give their friends and family rides. Here's Eddie Kutros landing after a solo flight that earned him his license. It was great. It was fantastic. Unbelievable experience. Sure I bet was. you're ready to go up again, are you? I am. I am. Let's, let's, uh, let's hook her up and go. 
<laughs> well, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I guess something you never get tired of, huh? No, no, that's, uh, I've, I've started flying in uh, 1980, and uh, it's still it's just as much fun as when I started. You guys ready? On the count of three, one, two. While motorized flight with all of its technology has evolved amazingly over the years, it somehow lacks the natural thrill that, well, only a hawk could relate to. Now I know why they call it Love at First Flight.